Jurisdiction Part 3 Court of Appeals. So nasa Court of Appeals na tayo. These are the relevant laws. You have BP or Batas Pambansa bilang 129 an act reorganizing the judiciary. Next, you have Executive Order number 33 amending certain sections of the Judiciary Reorganization Act of 1980, Republic Act number 7902. What is that? It is an act expanding the jurisdiction of the Court of Appeals, amending for the purpose Section 9 of BP Bilang 129. And last is you have Republic Act number 8246, an act creating additional divisions in the Court of Appeals, increasing the number of Court of Appeals justices from 51 to 69. So let's go back to our Odeska. What is Odeska again? That is your original. D for delegated. E is for exclusive original. S is for special jurisdiction. C is for concurrent. And A is your appellate. So what is the Odeska of the Court of Appeals? So meron bang original jurisdiction ang Court of Appeals? Answer is... Yes, Section 9 of BP 129 is very clear that the Court of Appeals shall exercise, this is number one, original jurisdiction to issue writs of CPM, certiorari, prohibition, mandamus, habeas corpus, and co-waranto, and auxiliary writs of processes whether or not in aid of its appellate jurisdiction. So this is the original jurisdiction of the Court of Appeals. Take note ha, ang pinag-uusapan pa lang natin is the original jurisdiction of the Court of Appeals. Huwag malito. So we are done with letter O. How about letter D, the delegated jurisdiction of the Court of Appeals? Walang delegated jurisdiction ang Court of Appeals. Let's go to E, the exclusive original. Section 9 of your BP 129 is very clear that the CA exercises exclusive original jurisdiction over actions for annulment of judgments of RTC. Take note ha, take note, the decision or the judgment is the one rendered by the regional trial court. Hindi judgment or decision rendered by the MTC but the one rendered by the RTC. Segue tayo. Let's go to Rule 47, Section 2. What are your grounds for the annulment of judgment? There are two. Number one is your extrinsic fraud and number two is your lack of jurisdiction. We'll go to the concurrent jurisdiction. Paulit-ulit na natin tong sinasabi. Si Court of Appeals, hindi lamang siya ang may original jurisdiction to issue the writs of CPM, habeas corpus, and co-waranto. Si RTC, meron ding original jurisdiction to issue the writs of, this is your Rule 65, CPM, Rule 66, co-waranto, Rule 102, habeas corpus. The same is also true when you talk about the Supreme Court. At dahil yan ay... Um, meron silang mga jurisdiction to hear and try that petitions. That jurisdiction or that power to hear is shared with other courts. That is the reason why it is a concurrent jurisdiction. At pag pinag-uusapan ang concurrent jurisdiction, hindi pwedeng mawala ang doctrine or the principle of hierarchy of courts. So, if you are going to file a Rule 65 against a Judge of the MTC, feeling mo si judge is nag-commit ng grave abuse of discretion, saan mo ifa-file ngayon? Ifa-file mo muna sa RTC, hindi ka dederecho sa Supreme Court kahit meron silang concurrent jurisdiction because of the principle of hierarchy of courts. But for decisions rendered by the RTC, the Civil Service Commission, the NLRC, and other quasi-judicial agencies, you can file a Rule 65 or a petition for certiorari prohibition mandamus against these bodies where either in the Court of Appeals or in the Supreme Court. Meron silang concurrent jurisdiction. But, of course, 
When we talk again about concurrent jurisdiction, hindi ka pwedeng dumiretso sa Supreme Court unless you have that compelling reason. You observe again the principle of the hierarchy of courts. Let me just emphasize the Civil Service Commission. Your CSC is a constitutional body together with the COMELEC and the COA. But si Civil Service Commission, hindi yan pasok sa Rule 64. Hindi yan kasama. Hindi yan idederecho sa Supreme Court. Kailangan dadaan ka muna sa Court of Appeals. 2017, number 11, bar exam question, what is the mode of appeal applicable to a decision or final order of the NLRC and what issues may be raised before the reviewing court or tribunal? So what is the answer? There is no appeal. Walang appeal if it is a decision of the NLRC. Bakit? Because the decision of the commission or the decision of the NLRC is final and executory. And since it is a final decision and executory, therefore, hindi mo na yan pwedeng i-appeal. So, what is your remedy? Your remedy only is if may nakita ka that the NLRC acted with grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction, then that is the time that you can file a petition for certiorari under Rule 65. But question, where do you file your Rule 65? Where do you file your petition for certiorari? Si Supreme Court and Court of Appeals meron silang concurrent jurisdiction over your petitions for Rule 65. But because of the doctrine of the hierarchy of courts, you file it before the Court of Appeals. 2013 bar exam question number 20 MCQ the labor arbiter ruling on a purely legal question ordered the reinstatement of a worker and the ruling was affirmed on appeal by the NLRC the decision of the NLRC is final so what is the remedy of the of the company choices are letter A file a motion for recon and if denied you file a petition for review with the Court of Appeals, the ground is pure legal question. Letter B, you file a motion for recon and if denied, you appeal to the Secretary of Labor since a labor policy issue is involved. Letter C, you file a motion for recon and if denied, you file a petition for certiorari with the Court of Appeals. The ground is grave abuse of discretion by the NLRC. Choice letter D, you file a motion for recon and if denied, you file Rule 45, a petition for review on certiorari with the Supreme Court since a pure question of law is involved. Last choice, letter A, letter E, you directly file a petition for certiorari with the Court of Appeals since a motion for reconsideration would serve no purpose when a pure question of law is involved. So if you read if you read the answer to the uh, if you read the answer of the UP Law Center, ang ginamit nilang sagot dito is letter C. Because this is the case of St. Martin Funeral Homes. This is the famous case. Alam natin tong lahat. Ang usual remedy is you really need to file a motion for recon first and then if that is denied, it is now your time to go to the Court of Appeals to file a Rule 65. That is the general rule. Again ha, that is the general rule. But, pag titingnan mo talaga, the correct answer is letter E. Bakit naging letter E? Because, pag nababasa nyo yung mga decisions ng Supreme Court, palaging sinasabi ng Supreme Court that your motion for reconsideration, that is a condition sine qua non for the filing of a petition for certiorari. That is a must. But that is only the general rule. There are exceptions. And one of the exceptions is where the issue raised is one purely of law or where the public interest is involved. Pag binasa mo yung problem, the labor arbiter here was ruling on a purely legal question. So this is your basis why you can go directly to the Court of Appeals and file your Rule 65 because your motion for recon would be 
useless. It would serve no purpose because a pure question of law is involved. Still in concurrent jurisdiction, you recall this slide pagdating sa habeas data, si Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, RTC, and Sandigan Bayan, meron silang concurrent jurisdiction. The same is also true when you talk about writ of amparo. Pagdating naman sa habeas corpus and writ of continuing mandamus, you drop Sandigan Bayan. Wala nang concurrent jurisdiction ang Sandigan Bayan. Only the Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, and RTC. And for your writ of kalikasan, only the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals can hear or try these petitions. So we are now in letter A, that is the appellate jurisdiction. So there are two ways to go up or to go to the Court of Appeals. First is you file an ordinary appeal and the second one is you file a petition for review. So what are the instances wherein you will just file an ordinary appeal? Number one is for decisions rendered by the Regional Trial Court or the RTC. But you have to make sure here that the RTC is in the exercise of its original jurisdiction. Meaning to say, yung kaso, final unang-una sa RTC dahil ang RTC lang ang may original jurisdiction. What is our basis? If you read Section 9, BP 129, it is the Court of Appeals which shall exercise exclusive appellate jurisdiction over all final judgments, decisions, resolutions, orders, or awards of RTC. What else? Decisions rendered by family court. If you read RA 8369, that is the Family Court Act of 1997, Section 14 is very clear. If there is a decision or orders rendered by the family court, saan mo i-appeal, i-appeal mo in the same manner and subject to the same conditions as appeals from the ordinary RTC. E, ang ordinary RTC, saan mo ulit i-aakyat sa Court of Appeals. Are these the only decisions that pwedeng i-aakyat by ordinary appeal? Answer is no. Pwede rin kasi ang decision rendered by the MTC. Paano nangyari yun? E ang sabi natin, pag it is a decision rendered by the MTC, saan ka aakyat? Sa RTC lang. Bakit naging pwede from MTC diretsyo sa Court of Appeals? Because make sure here, you have to make sure here that the MTC is in the exercise of its delegated jurisdiction. And if the MTC is in the exercise of its delegated jurisdiction, ito yung mga cadastral cases and land registration cases. Ano ang sabi ng Section 4 of BP 129? The decisions of the MTC shall be appealable in the same manner as decisions of the RTC. And if since it is the same manner as decisions of the RTC, where do you go? To the Court of Appeals via an ordinary appeal. 2014, number 14, bar question, MCQ. When a municipal trial court pursuant to its delegated jurisdiction renders an adverse judgment in an application for land registration, what is the remedy of the aggrieved party? Choices are, letter A, you file an ordinary appeal to the RTC. Letter B, you file a petition for review on certiorari or Rule 45 to the Supreme Court. Letter C, you just file an ordinary appeal to the Court of Appeals. Letter D, you file a petition for review to the Court of Appeals. So, alam nyo na to, ang sagot dito is letter C. Just file an ordinary appeal to the Court of Appeals according to Section 34 of BP 129. So, paborito talaga tong tanungin ang delegated jurisdiction ng MTC, MTC 2012, number 10.3. Where and how will you appeal a judgment of MTC on a land registration case based on its delegated jurisdiction? So, what are you going to file again? An ordinary appeal. You file a notice of appeal within 15 days, 
15 days is counted from when from notice of judgment or final order appealed from and where are you going to file you are going to file it in the court of appeals so we are done with the ordinary appeal we'll go now to petition for review so what are those instances we're in what you need to file is a petition for review first for decisions rendered by the rtc but the rtc is in the exercise of its appellate jurisdiction meaning to say the case was originally filed in the mtc at inapila sa rtc at yung decision ng rtc hindi ka masaya what is your next remedy? According to Section 22 of BP 129, the decision of the RTC in these cases shall be appealable by petition for review to the Court of Appeals. That is the reason why what you need to file is a petition for review. Second is the decisions of quasi-judicial agencies. Ano ba itong mga quasi-judicial agencies? Again, let me just emphasize Civil Service Commission, although it is a constitutional body, but ang akyat mo is a Court of Appeals. Itanggalin nyo yan ha, kasi tatlo ang constitutional bodies. You have the COMELEC and COA. Ang akyat ng COMELEC and COA sa Supreme Court. But when it comes to Civil Service Commission sa Court of Appeals. What else? The Securities and Exchange Commission, Office of the President, LRA, Sec Social Security Commission, Civil Aeronautics Board, National Electrification Administration, Energy Regulatory Board, Board of Investments, the Bureau of Patents, Trademarks and Technology Transfer, NTC or the National Telecommunications Commission, Department of Agrarian Reform, GSIS, Employees Com Compensation Commission, Agricultural Invention Board, Insurance Commission, Philippine Atomic Energy Commission, Construction Industry Arbitration Commission, Voluntary Arbitrators, Authorized by Law. Ito yung mga naka-enumerate under Rule 43, your quasi-judicial agencies. But just take note that the enumeration is not exclusive. What else? Decisions rendered by the ombudsman, but it must be a decision rendered in an administrative disciplinary cases. 2006 bar exam question, does the Court of Appeals have jurisdiction to review the decisions in criminal and admin cases of the ombudsman? Alam nyo na to, this is the famous case of Fabian versus Desierto. Pag admin cases saan, saan ang akyat sa Court of Appeals Rule 43 Pag criminal cases saan ang akyat sa decisions ng ombudsman sa Supreme Court Petition for Certiorari under Rule 65 So this is the summary of the way to go up to the Court of Appeals by way of an ordinary appeal or petition for review you read Section 2 of RA 8246, how does the Court of Appeals exercises its powers and functions? The CA exercises its powers through the divisions, and each division is composed of three members. Question, can you appeal a decision rendered by the Court of Appeals in division to the Court of Appeals in bank? Answer is... No. Bakit? The Court of Appeals, they sit in bank only for the purpose of exercising admin, ceremonial, or non-adjudicatory functions. Next, huwag niyong kakalimutan to ha. Huwag niyo talaga tong kakalimutan. The Court of Appeals has the power to, number one, try cases and conduct hearings. It also has the power to receive evidence and last, it is, it has the power to perform any acts and all acts necessary to resolve factual issues raised in cases falling within its original jurisdiction or appellate jurisdiction. Included in that power is to grant and conduct new trials or further proceedings. Take note ha, take note. Ang ginamit dito na term is necessary to resolve factual issues. In fact, inulit pa yan. If you read 
the rules of court rule 46 section 6 the determination of factual issues whenever necessary to resolve factual issues the court of appeals itself may conduct hearings or delegate the reception of the evidence on such issue to any of its members or to an appropriate court agency or office bakit yung yung word used is necessary remember always that the factual determination of the court of appeals is binding that is conclusive on the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court will no longer disturb the factual determination of the Court of Appeals. That is the general rule. General rule pa lang ang pinag-uusapan natin. When we go to the discussion about the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, you will know that that is, uh, that is the general rule and there are exceptions. Kaya si Court of Appeals gagawin niya talaga ang lahat para ma-resolve niya ang factual issues because again, that is binding, that is conclusive, that is final. Next, trials or hearings in the Court of Appeals must be continuous and it must be completed within three months unless extended by the Chief Justice. This is Section 1 of your RA 7902. 2008 bar exam question give at least three instances where the court of appeals may act as a trial court so in annulment of judgments the court of appeals may act as trial court basis section 5 and 6 of rule 47 what else if there is a motion for new trial filed and it is granted by the court of appeals then the court of appeals can also act as a trial court basis Section 4 of Rule 53. Also, in your petitions for habeas corpus, the habeas corpus shall be set for hearing. The same is also true in a writ of amparo proceedings, habeas data proceedings, and writ of kalikasan proceedings. In criminal cases also, Rule 124, Section 12 is very clear that the Court of Appeals shall have the power to try cases and conduct hearings, receive evidence, and perform any and all acts necessary to resolve factual issues raised in cases falling within the original jurisdiction of the Court of Appeals involving claims for damages arising from provisional remedies and where the courts grants a new trial based on the ground of newly discovered evidence. So these are the instances wherein the Court of Appeals can act as a trial court. Let me end this video through this 2014 bar exam question number 21. We have here a president. The name is Al Pacino. What a name, no? We'll call him Al Pacino instead. So he is the president of Good Feather Corporation. And what did he do? He filed a complaint for specific performance against Robert White in the RTC. Specific performance that is not capable of pecuniary performance is a pecuniary estimation. So ano ang ginawa ni Robert White? Hindi nag-file ng answer. Ang ginawa niya is nag-file siya ng motion to dismiss. Ground is lack of the appropriate board resolution from the board of directors of Good Feather Corporation to show the authority of Al Pacino to represent the corporation and file the complaint in its behalf. Ano ang naging decision ng RTC sa motion to dismiss? It granted the motion to dismiss and it ordered the dismissal of the complaint. Ang sakit, sayang ang filing fees. So, ano ang ginawa ni Al Pacino? He filed a motion for recon but again, denied. So, in, he filed an appeal before the Court of Appeals. Nung nag-file na siya ng appeal before the CA, sabi ni Robert White, Malika Al Pacino. Bakit? Because your issue here is one which is purely a question of law. And since it is a pure question of law, dapat ang akyat mo is sa Supreme Court, di ba? From RTC decision, you can go directly to the Supreme Court basis is pure question of law. But ano ang sabi ni Al Pacino? Malika Robert White because my appeal is based on question of fact and 
question of law. Bakit merong question of fact? Because there must be a factual determination if indeed I am duly authorized by Good Feather Corporation to file the complaint. So question, whose position is correct? Answer is, the position of Al Pacino is the one that is correct. Bakit correct ang position ni Al Pacino? Because if you look at the dismissal of the complaint, the dismissal of the complaint was due to the fact that there is an alleged lack of appropriate board resolution from the board of directors of Good Feather Corporation. And since, and since that is the um, basis for its dismissal, then that is a factual determination. That is a factual determination of the authority to file the complaint for the said corporation, then that is a proper issue raised before the Court of Appeals. Hindi mo yan pwedeng erase sa Supreme Court kasi nga ang Supreme Court only question of law.